Welcome back. We are here at the beginning of a new phase in our development environment series. We already went over all the steps necessary to set up an AMP inside of a virtual machine running Linux. Now we are going over some of the most basic applications that are going to become part of our daily lives as Drupal developers. The original list of secondary requirements had to be upgraded a little. We will start by installing Drush in our development environment. But first we need to understand what Drush is. Drush is a Drupal shell, hence the peculiar name. Drush runs on a terminal window. What Drush does is to go around the Drupal front end of a website and communicate straight with Drupal core. This allows Drush to be very efficient in executing common Drupal maintenance tasks. In fact, Drush is very easy to install. However, it requires special attention when it's done in a Linux environment. The problem of running Drush in Linux is that when you install a module through Drush, the files that belong to this module end up being owned by my user. But when we install a module through the Drupal's web interface, the files associated with this module belong to the Apache user. <laughs> this mishmash of file ownership in our website can cause a couple of problems. The files created by Drush cannot be edited by Apache, and that may compromise the stability of our website. And uh, when I'm using a PHP editor, such as Eclipse, to edit a module or a theme, I won't be able to save my chains if the files that I'm working on belong to Apache. To answer to all these configuration requirements, we had to resort to several Linux configuration tools. Here is a list of tasks that we will have to perform so Drush can play by Linux's rules. Number one, change files and folders ownership with shown. Number two, change files and folders permissions with shmod. Number three, use the set UID and set GID flags to configure folders so files created inside of them will inherit their ownership credentials. Number four, use the ACL access control lists tool to configure persistent permissions on folders. Number five, alter the default umask for my user so every file created by me will allow group full access. Number six, change the default group for my user. And number seven, use a little pseudo trick to run Drush through the Apache user. Looks like I got my work cut out for me, so let's get started. We are going to start by running our virtual machine with CentOS. And open a terminal window. This tutorial will be done almost completely out of the terminal, so get ready. Let's switch user going to the root user. And now we are going to set up a Drush pair channel in our computer. So now that pair knows where Drush is, we can use it to download and install Drush. That's it. With pair, that's all you need to do. Two lines of code and Drush is installed. Now let's open the browser. We are going to open our Hello World website. Now let's go to our preferences and select this as our home page. Now let's go back to our terminal and change the directory and go to our HTML folder. As you can see, we have the folder for our Drupal Fever website there and we also have the folder for PHP My Admin. What we are going to do is delete our website folder. We are doing that because we are going to recreate this folder using Drush. As you can see, the folder is deleted. Now we need to execute this one line of command. Drush will download the latest stable Drupal core installation file, decompress this file into a folder, rename this new folder to Drupal Fever, and delete the original compressed file, all on a single shot. As you can see here, our Drupal Fever website folder was recreated and the installation files for Drupal are now there. Now let's go back to our browser and do a refresh. There it is. Drupal is ready for the web-based installation. But since we now have Drush, we can do the installation through a different route. Now go back to the terminal. And before we forget, 
Let's recreate the symbolic link for phpMyAdmin. Now, here's the drush command to do the Drupal site installation. Let's take a little time to break it down. Here is drush si, which is the command for site installation, and dash y, which is going to answer yes to all prompts during the installation, and dash dash db dash url is a property to which you will provide the MySQL database link. The database link is comprised of number one, the database driver, which in our case is MySQL I. Pay attention to the I at the end of the MySQL. This is the improved version of the MySQL driver, but it will only work on a server with PHP 5 and up. For older versions of PHP, you will have to use the regular MySQL driver. Number two, here goes the username that Drush will use to access your database. We are using the root database user here, but on a production environment, you should create a specific user for each website that will only have privileges over the database associated with their own web project. Number three, now we need to provide the database user password. Just don't get confused here. The root database user is not the same as our system root user. Although they have the same username, they should have different passwords. Number four, now we see the at symbol and after that, the database server path. In our case, we installed MySQL on the same PC as our Apache server, so we're going to use localhost for our database address here. And on number five, after the slash, is the name of the database that Drush will create for us. I typed Drupal Fever here, but you should type a database name that will make more sense to your own web project. So the Drupal installation is finished. Yes, it was that fast. And Drush automatically creates a Drupal administrator user for us and generates a random password as well. Now let's copy this information and save into a text file. Let me format it a little better. And let's save it as Drupal Pass and save on our desktop. Now I'll copy the username, go to the browser, let's refresh it. Oops, we need to go back to the home page. Now paste the username. Let's go back here and copy the password. Paste here and log in. Let the browser save the password. Now, as you can see, Drupal is properly installed and we have a working administrator account. All done automatically by Drush. Now, let's go back to the terminal. Let's close this. Now, we still need to do some configuration in order to have our development environment ready for prime time. We'll start by creating a couple of folders that, in my opinion, should have been created with the Drupal installation by default. The first folder is the Libraries folder. Now we are going to create the Contrib, the Custom and the Features folders inside of the Modules folder. Now we are going to change the ownership of all the files and folders created by Drush. All of them are owned by root now since we are running Drush as root on the terminal. We will change their ownership so they will belong to the Apache user. Now we are going to change several permission settings in our new Drupal installation. We will start by changing the permissions and ownership flags for the Contrib, Custom and Features folders. Now we will do the same for the Themes folder. And we will do it once again for the Files folder. Finally, we will set up some specific ACL permission settings for each of these folders. ACL will set up permissions for the Apache user, my user user, and the Apache group. And here you will need to replace my username user with a capital U with your own user for this to work on your computer. We will do the same ACL permission settings for each of the previously mentioned folders. Now, there is a little caveat with regards to using ACL. When you are adding ACL permissions to a folder, you have to make sure that the parent folders down the directory tree 
have a minimum permission of 711. If any of the folders down the directory tree is configured with a permission lower than 711, your ACL configuration at the top of the directory tree is not going to work. This is a bit of information about ACL that's not very well known, but can be very frustrating when trying to set up ACL. Actually, there is a folder on the directory tree of one of the folders where we set up ACL here that has a permission configuration that is lower than 711. This folder is the default folder. The default folder, which is the parent of the files folder, is configured with a permission of 555. This permission is lower than the 711 minimum. So we need to change it to 755. Whew, we are done with permissions. Now we need to add our user to the sudoers file and we'll do that through vi sudo. First we need to enter into insert mode by pressing the i in our keyboard. Now let's go down to the end of the sudoers file and type this configuration line. This will give to my user, user with a capital U, the ability to run any command on this computer with the same permissions as the root user and we won't even have to type a password. Now we need to press escape, column, W, Q and press enter to save our configuration. I now need to change the default group for my user to Apache. So from now on, each file that I create on this computer with my user will still be owned by me but will have Apache as the group owner. So now that my user has sudo privileges, I can exit the root user account. But before we can use sudo, we need to close this terminal window and log out of our Linux account. Now, when I log back in, I will have sudo privileges. So now let's open the terminal window again. Now we are going to change the default umask for our user by editing the etc slash profile file. We need to go to the end of this file and type these lines. You may want to pause this video to copy this. Just remember to replace the user with the capital U with your own user. So now, every file or folder that I create inside or outside of a terminal window will have read, write and execute permissions for my default group, which is now Apache. Now to save and exit Nano, we need to press Ctrl O, Enter, Ctrl X. So now let's find out where Drush was installed by using the which command. And let's copy this path. And now let's execute this command that will add an alias to Drush in our bash rc file. So from now on, every time that I run the Drush command, it will be executed as if it was the Apache user running it. In other words, every file or folder that Drush will create from now on will be owned by Apache. Finally, I'm ready to showcase some of Drush's best attributes. Drush really shines when it comes to module management. I will download now 11 modules all at once with a single line of command. We will use the drush dl command to download the modules. By the way, these are the modules that I usually install on every new Drupal 7 installation. They improve the management interface and help on the web development process. Drush is downloading each module, decompressing their files and saving them into the contrib folder. Now the modules are here, but they need to be enabled and we can do this with another drush command. For this, we use the drush en command to enable the modules and dash y to answer yes to all prompts for each module. Okay, it enabled all the modules. Now, since I enabled the admin menu module, I need to disable the toolbar core module so they don't clash with one another. And as you may have already guessed, 
Drush can do that too. We disable modules with the Drush DIS command. Let's go back to the website, log in, and see how it looks like now. As you can see, we no longer have the toolbar module. We have the admin menu module. And if you go to the available updates menu option, you'll see a list of all the modules we just enabled on our website. So that's it. Let's close this browser, the terminal, and we are done for now. We have Drush installed and properly configured. But before I go, I have a confession to make. The Drush logo that you guys saw throughout this tutorial is not an official Drush logo. I designed this logo because I felt that Drush deserved a graphical representation. So when I offered my proud creation to the Drush team, I was politely informed that they already had their own logo. This is their official logo. I just decided to use my own Drush logo here in this tutorial, so all my hard work will not completely go to waste. So now you know. Oh well. Please, subscribe to this channel to be informed of our next video in the Drupal Development Environment series where we're going to talk about the Eclipse ID. So I'll see you soon.